right, so in today's video, I'm finally gonna go over how to cut the tarp for your 270 homemade awning. I'm also gonna weigh the awning so you know how much it weighs because I've got a lot of questions about that. But before we get into that, I just wanna, if you're new to the channel and haven't seen this yet, I wanna open up the awning just so you can see what we're working on. So come check it out. I'll open it up um, and show it to you. So like I said, if you're new, this is a homemade 270 awning. Um, the whole thing costs a little bit under $150. Bunch of uh, steel at the steel supply store and a tarp from Harbor Freight. And check this out, it's pretty cool. Just buckles on up here. Grab the other end. It's all set up. So anyways, you might have seen this already, but if you haven't, this is what we're going to be working on. And today we're going to go over how to set up your tarp and cut out the center. So let's get into it. All right, at the local fabric store, let's get our needle and thread. Good, how are you? Okay. I think that's everything. Okay. So three buckles, three yards of the heavy duty one spool of the upholstery thread mm -hmm. and then a number 18 needle okay perfect it's 29 and one all right awesome yeah. thank you so much thank you all right guys 29 dollars and that's not that bad the thread and the needle you can't avoid but um in my first awning i used some strapping from some just things I had lying around with buckles on them that I was gonna throw away. So you can see how you could save probably 20 bucks if you do the same thing. Next stop, we are gonna get a tarp and I actually just went to the gym in between getting the thread and needle. This is actually just across the street from the fabric store. But here we are after a nice little workout. This is exactly what you want. I've already got this part of it, so I'm just going to be buying the extra grommets right here. So six bucks, and this is 24 of these grommets. This will let you add eyelets to your tarp, wherever you want, it's super nice to have. It's only nine bucks for 12 and the whole tool set, so definitely get one. All right, you guys, we just got back from shopping and let me show you everything that we got. So we've got our three buckles here. I'm gonna be using these for the attachment points for the awning tarp once it's um, out. And one of them is going to be for the closure about when you roll up the tarp before you zip it, you can uh, close this up and it holds the tarp in place before you run the zipper. Um, next thing is our polyester thread. This is a really important part of sewing heavy duty uh, materials. Now you don't have to necessarily sew um, the tarp once you cut it. You could probably just get away with this heavy duty tape. 
Um, but since I have a sewing machine, I'm going to be using this. This is black upholstery thread. And basically, if you just run into the uh, fabric store and ask what the strongest thread you can run on a home machine, like a non-industrial machine, they should point you to this stuff. Um, it was like eight bucks, I think, or eight ninety nine, but it lasts a while and it's crazy strong. So need some of that. And then the needle that I'm using for my sewing machine is the uh, same thing. I asked for the heaviest needle you can run on a um, home machine and it's a number 18 um, and those two together really help you go through some heavy duty material without snapping this or breaking your thread. Um, so the other thing I got was the webbing from the fabric store. Um, I wanted to buy this there just to give you an example of what it might cost and if you wanted to just buy all this material instead of sourcing it from used stuff. It ended up being um, 29 bucks um, tax with tax for the three buckles, um, three yards of the webbing and thread and needle. Now you could not pay for this. This was a uh, $3 a yard, so nine bucks there. And then these were $3 each. So 18 bucks you could probably avoid if you can find an old backpack on the side of the road or at the Goodwill or use a tie down or there's probably cheaper ways to do that. And honestly, sometimes you can find better materials that way too but if you are going to buy it it's not that expensive 29 for everything i got at the um fabric store so that and then what else okay so then we went to the hardware store and i was all out of these grommets but it's a great time to show you what i'm using to put eyelets in the tarp this is something i feel like I wish I knew about a long time ago, but basically it's a really simple setup. I think we saw at the hardware store is nine bucks. You get um, 12 sets of these and this, or you could do what I did for nine bucks and you get 24 of these guys. But basically this goes on here. Um, this goes on top, or actually, let's see, I think like this. And oh, now I'm doing it all backwards. This like this over the fabric. Um, and then when this comes down, it mushrooms out the top there. And that's what closes the eyelid around the tarp. Anyways, I'll show you how it, how it works um, on the tarp itself, but these things are super awesome and it's a nice tool to have. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, wow, nine bucks and you get this kind of old school looking neat tool. It's actually a good deal. So we got the eyelets, and then I went with super heavy duty Gorilla Tape, which was crazy expensive, like 16 bucks, 17 bucks, but it's the extra wide stuff. Um, and if you're not gonna sew, I'd go with something like this. Um, and it just can really, really hold on. It's super strong and uh, yeah, it's good stuff. So I'm gonna keep this in the truck. I needed some anyway. So lastly, but not least is the template um, that I just made and this is going to be available for you guys when this video comes out on my website hopefully um, I'll have a link to the description in the description to wherever you can get this wherever I ended up posting it um, but basically what you should be able to do is cut this out place this on the metal cut your um, cut your your awning hinge out this is going to be the top side the middle and then the other side um, and that should get you all set up. It's going to show you uh, where you need to place your awning arms and also give you the right size bracket and all that kind of stuff. And you print it to um, to scale. So once you print it, make sure measure this little box. Make sure that this is uh, indeed one inch by one inch, and that way you know that you printed it out to the correct scale, 100% um, scale of the image, and you should be set. So. Wow, that was a lot of talking for a single shot, but that is everything we've got right now, and let's get started. All right, you guys, so we're back from the store. This is a little bit later than when I filmed the uh, previous parts of the video. I've been jumping around trying to get stuff done, and I'm finally getting to finishing the rest of this video, but I've got a eight foot by 11 and six foot tarp from Harbor Freight, <clears throat> and you can see some of the details here. It makes a really good cheap awning cover. It lasts through the sun, especially the sun, reflects the sunlight, keeps it cooler. It's rot and mildew resistant, rust resistant aluminum grommets on every corner. And then it's also 14 by 14 mesh. So it's pretty, it's pretty heavy duty as far as tarps go.
All right, this is kind of funny. The sun is actually illuminating a similar patch that we're gonna be removing from the tarp. So first things you wanna do is orient your tarp uh, long ways away from you. So you got the longest edge running away from you. That's gonna be going down the side of your truck. And the, sh the narrow side, the eight and a half foot side is gonna be the back of your truck. So once you get that, now we're gonna walk uh, to the truck and pull it on in that direction. So longest side of the tarp, runs along parallel with the length of the track. Okay, so here's what I'm using to secure the corners of the tarp to the awning arms. I believe this is a three inch long uh, quarter 20 thread um, socket cap <laughs> screw bolt. Basically a three inch long bolt, a large fender washer, and a nylon lock nut. This goes through the arm, tarp goes on top, closes over the tarp, and then the lock nut just holds it on like that. So. That's what I'm doing right now, and then we'll have it basically set up. Okay, so you should be at this stage now. You've got your uncut tarp on all three awning arms. The long edge of the tarp is running parallel with the truck, and now your tarp is kind of just flopping around up there. So now we're gonna grab the straps, and we're gonna just kind of initially pull the tarp tight on the one corner that's not on um, any arms, and that's gonna give us, we can from there we can kind of look around and see where an uh, easy attachment point will be for the tarp um, and the straps, and then we can pick where we're gonna cut. So let's do that now. Okay, so here's the view from the top of my truck. I've got the three arms out there and my uncut tarp here. Now, if I pull on this tarp, you can see it all gets nice and tight on all edges because the arms um, don't lock, they can move. So they're gonna move to the farthest points that they can. So with this tarp, this actually fits absolutely perfectly with my particular width of rack onto my first gen Tacoma. If you have a bigger truck, a slightly bigger tarp um, might fit you better because you're basically trying to find a nice anchor point for this leading edge here um, to attach to. For my truck, this tarp that I showed you is the perfect um, fit for convenience and ease of setup. Um, I don't have to really do anything except for cutting out this center section that I'm holding. So what I'm going to do is look and see if I can't find an eyelet um, that matches really well. And I think this one right over here, um, right by my awning bag, is actually going to be perfect for my strap and I'm going to loop it around this bar. Um, for you, it might be different. So look for something that you can easily loop around. Maybe it's maybe it's this one. Um, we can always add more, but I'm gonna, for now, put a strap right in there, and then I can walk over here and find another spot. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the tarp here, and it looks like this is a pretty nice natural, at least natural starting point. So. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Okay, so I've got my strap on here. You don't have to cinch this down. In fact, you want to kind of leave it loose until we grab the other side and make sure that we've got it uh, in a good spot as well. Okay, so I can tell I want my tarp to end right before the end of my rack. Um, so I'm gonna actually cut it ahead. So if I want the tarp to end right here once it's cut and rolled up, I'm gonna actually make a cut right over here. So what I'm gonna do is mark where I want it to actually end, which is gonna be like right here. It's a piece of tape. Um, and put a little marker on there with some tape or you could use a permanent marker. Now I've got the one edge I want to cut and I know I'm going to add, I'm going to give myself 
about four inches of room. So now I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so now that we've got our tarp kind of on the truck, um, I got my first buckle here. I'm basically picking where I'm going to cut the tarp so that I can cut the center section out. Now, keep in mind, you're gonna, once we cut it, we're gonna roll it twice so that it's a little stronger. So make sure you give yourself room. I'm gonna mark right where I want it to actually end. Um, and then I'm gonna cut in front of that and roll it back. So I'm just using some tape. Uh, you could use a uh, permanent marker or whatever you want. But basically at this, um, if I cut it and roll it back and it ends right here, it's got enough coverage that there's not rain coming in um, and still hitting me on the head when I've got this pulled tight. You could move it back over here, even here, but keep in mind that corner is gonna be harder and harder to open up. So I'm gonna mark mine right here. And now I've got this side marked. I've got that side marked in the same way. We can pull this tarp off and we can um, begin to cut out the center. Oh, one more thing that might be helpful, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it, is go to the center of the tarp where this hinge is and just give yourself a little mark um, where you want that inside corner to be. We can just do uh, straight lines with a 90 once we get it off if we don't have this mark, but this is just a nice peace of mind knowing that you didn't cut too far into your awning and leave a big hole. So I'm gonna pull this kind of tight like this and then put a mark right over here just for reference. So we're back in the messy garage. We've got the tarp off the truck and we've got our tarp marked out um, once it was on the truck. So this is where I want it to end. So I know I wanna cut ahead of that so that I can roll back. So I've got my marker here. <clears throat> I've got my uh, marker here. And then I've got my mark for the center of the hinge. Um, and that is just a nice little handy piece to have there. So I know this is roughly where I want the corner to be. So I'm gonna go like this, just so visually it's easier to see. I want my corner to be like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is take a piece of scrap metal or just extra metal from the awning and place it. Uh, I think I need like this much to fold double to get there. So I'm gonna place it about that far away. Um, doesn't have to be, you know, super exact. But now I've got a nice straight edge that's going to my edge here. I'm gonna just draw a line with my Sharpie, like that. Okay, probably right there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here and match up my little tape there with this guy. I want some extra room, so it looks like it's a little bit not super square let's see there we go okay so i've got my gap there i've got my gap over here <clears throat> that's the center that where i want the hinge so remember i'm going to be cutting and folding this back so i'm going to go like this and then that's where i'm going to initially cut once i get here what i'm going to do is figure out how to get this part kind of more over there we'll show you that that didn't make sense, but I'm gonna cut it. You'll, it'll make Simple sense. Scissors right. here. It's gonna be hard to do with one hand, but once you cut it, just like wrapping paper, you can, if you hold both sides, you can just rip right along. So check this out. Cut our little section out here. And remember we cut in, uh, we cut a little bit extra so that we can fold this over. So we need to cut right now um, a little bit in here and a little bit in here. Okay, so I'm gonna try this method out. Uh, there's someone out there might know a better method, but basically you want this area to be nice and strong because there's a lot of tension right here. You don't want like a clean cut like this where it's going to want to try and tear. So what we're going to do is fold this guy back a few times um, <clears throat> and give this, this area is going to be nice and strong. We're going to do the same thing right here and then we're going to probably add a little bit of tape right here. So now that we have the center section cut out, We've got our relief cut so we can fold it back. Now we're gonna just fold this back and roll it twice like a hem on a jean, basically. 
however much you, you can might even be able to roll it three times, but I'm probably gonna just roll it twice and then I'm gonna use some of that Gorilla Tape to um, hold it down like a needle would basically until I get it to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we've got um, the edges cut. They are folded twice and they're being held down in place with a little bit of that Gorilla Tape. So honestly, I think you could take that wide Gorilla Tape that I got here and you could just run a nice strip down the seam and close that off. And I bet you that stuff would hold forever. That stuff is super strong and especially the wide grip, it's not gonna be going anywhere. I'm actually gonna do that and then I'm going to sew over the top. So if you don't have a sewing machine, don't worry. I really do think um, a strip of that over the edge of that seam is gonna hold it in place. Plus you can add eyelets. Um, so I'm gonna run that over and then we'll move to the sewing machine. Okay guys, so <clears throat> we've got the tape all on there and you can see this is crazy. This stuff is crazy durable strong. So for a $9 or $10 tarp, some duct tape, you can get really far without a sewing machine. Um, I honestly think this is sufficient, but since I have a sewing machine, I'm gonna run a seam down here. And if you have a sewing machine, you can do the same thing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, uh, yeah, but man, I am really impressed with just how easy this would be if you didn't have a machine and you just wanted to do what I just did. Um, this super heavy duty Gorilla Tape is amazing. Okay, here's the sewing machine I'm gonna be using. It's a Brother machine. Hell yeah, Brother. It's an XR 1300. It's computerized, it has all these different things. This was a gift to me a lot of years ago. I really don't think it's that expensive. I, I wanna say maybe under $200, I haven't checked. Not that much but it's been working awesome and I don't anticipate it having any trouble going through our tarp as long as we use that heavy duty needle I talked about and the upholstery thread that we got. So let's see how it does. So take a look at how easily this is just punching right through there. I just changed the thread to a number or the uh, pattern to a number three. I'm gonna try that. Maybe just give it a little more surface area on the uh, on the stitch. Maybe I'll actually do a number seven. I don't know, that's the cool thing about this machine. You just change what you want right there and you're good to go. So I'm gonna finish sewing this up and we're almost ready to add the eyelet. Okay, so now we've got the tarp um, cut, taped, and sewn. And this is where our old eyelet is that we used to attach to the uh, rack. We're gonna add some new eyelets, which <clears throat> You guys are gonna love this. I only discovered this a little while ago, but this simple little tool, which I should do at the hardware store for like 10 bucks, 
is so cool. You can add eyelets to just about anything and the way it works is kind of neat. So all we're going to do is put a hole into the corner here. Now remember we folded this over a couple times so it's extra thick here so it's nice and strong. So we're just going to hammer this guy through and then add the eyelet. There you guys go. Check out how cool that is. Being able to add, and that's the first time I've seen it crack like that, <laughs> but being able to add an eyelet to a uh, tarp, so simple. I never knew you could do that before for such a, such a simple and cheap tool. So we're gonna add one more and then we can put this on the truck. All right, you guys, the awning is done and our tarp is nice and cut out and it's been taped and it's been sewn. We can tighten this up here and yeah, it's looking good. I'm really stoked on this. This is the third time I've made a tarp for one of these guys and hopefully that video was easy enough for you guys to follow along so that you can do the same thing. I like using the tarp, super low tech. Um, of course you could go a lot nicer. You could use sunbrella material, you could have it custom made or if you have the ability to make it yourself, you could spend a lot of money on getting a really nice material and making the whole thing that much nicer. But one of the best parts about using a tarp is that it is so cheap. If you make a mistake, um, you only spent 10 bucks on it. The duct tape actually works really great on a tarp as opposed to like fabric. So if you don't have a sewing machine, that's another reason why this could be a great option. And tarps come in a lot of different sizes. So like I said, for my truck, the width of my truck with this awning arms that I've um, shown you guys fits perfect with this size tarp. If you have a wider truck, you might go one size up in the tarp like a 10 by 11 or a 10 by 12 versus this eight and a half by 11 and a half. So you might have to play around with that a little bit for something that's gonna fit just like right out of the box like this one did. Um, for my particular rack, I think it's 48 inches across. This is perfect. So yeah, anyways, I hope that's really helpful for you guys. Um, I've had a lot of fun sharing this whole awning idea and the template and everything. So really appreciate all the good feedback and I hope you guys are enjoying your own awnings and hopefully this video helps you make the last part. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you subscribe. It makes a huge difference. It's fun to watch a channel grow and I'm actually getting some money and putting it back into the channel with some new cameras and a mic so you can hear me better. So thanks for that guys and I'll see you in the next video.